Hello, I am Oscar Crawford. Welcome to the teaching ministry of New Eden. Today I want to talk to you about the idea of how to be happy for the rest of your life. Whatever happens, how to be happy for the rest of your life. And I'm going to be reading to you uh, to develop a text for the foundation of all that I'm going to share from the book of Proverbs. It is in the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament book of Proverbs. It is the book that follows the Psalms and precedes the book of Ecclesiastes. We're looking for chapter number 17 and verse number 17. We're going to read five or six verses uh, beginning at verse 17. And we're going to be reading from the Amplified Bible. Now I'm actually using uh, the Amplified Bible as it is found on BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com has a number of versions that are available to you. And for clarity's sake today, I am reading from the Amplified Bible on BibleGateway.com. I recommend it to you for your own reading and research. All right. Beginning at verse number 17, hear these words. And after the reading, I'll invite you to pray together with me for a moment. A friend loves at all times and is born as is a brother for adversity. Simply meaning that out of really tough times, you find out who your friends are. And once you stay the closest to you, you may find her even closer to you than your bloodline siblings. A friend loves at all times and is born as is a brother for adversity or tough times. A man void of good sense gives a pledge and become security for another in the presence of his neighbor, uh, where one has need and one takes an oath of what they will do to stand as a security for another. He does it in front of a witness. It's kind of like co-signing a loan uh, for someone you care about that you're trying to help accomplish a goal. Buy a car, buy a house, pay off something, but you're standing as a security for them that in the event they are unable to pay, that you're saying that you will, that your relationship uh, is that strong. He who loves strife and is quarrelsome loves transgression and invites himself into guilt. He who raises high his gateway and is boastful and arrogant invites destruction. He who has a wayward and crooked mind finds no good and he who has a willful and contrary tongue will fall into calamity. Now how many people do you know who, who allow themselves, uh, who allow their tongues to write checks um, that they really can't cash. You, you know people like that. Always flapping at their lips, talking big talk. And in the words of an old song of soul, it says, talking loud and ain't saying nothing. This is, this is kind of the person that we're talking about. He who has a wayward and crooked mind finds no good, and he who has a willful and contrary tongue will fall into calamity. Things won't go well for this person. He who becomes the parent of a self-confident fool does it to his own sorrow. And the father of an empty-headed fool finds no joy in his son. Now, uh, I'm not passing judgment here, but there are a number of people from time to time who find themselves disappointed with their children. It happens all the time. All right, now we're coming to the text. Verse number 22, chapter number 17 in the book of Proverbs says this, A happy heart, a happy heart is good medicine. A happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing. Oh, you know that's going to suggest to you, we're going to be talking about it, that your mind, your mind establishes the conditions of your inward person, your heart, your character, your real authentic you. Um, a happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works towards healing, you have that privileged power alive inside of you. And the final note says, but a broken spirit dries up even the bones. All of us have experienced some form of depression from time to time. And, and without this happy heart, without this cheerful mind that works healing, we can find ourselves insignificant and sad and unhappy and depressed. And so we're going to be talking today about how to live happy for the rest of your life. Please join me to pray. Dear God, thank you for the privilege to share with friends one more time. I pray that you allow me to say something, share a thought, a word, a message 
that might inspire someone who's going through something right now, uh, who may be challenged by a relationship that's not doing well, uh, a personal economy that's not going well, or health that is not going well. Let this message speak to them in such a way as that their restoration begins from this very moment, that where there have been unhappy conditions, happy conditions will follow because they say so. They choose it to be that way. For that and for the hope of it, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we've, uh, we've listened to the text. And I've talked you about the idea of how to be happy for the rest of your life. I want to begin today talking to you about a song uh, that Dr. Dennis Kimbrough mentions in his book, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. Now, many of you uh, probably heard about Think and Grow, Grow Rich, uh, a book written uh, in the tw early 20th century by Napoleon Hill. Well, Napoleon Hill, before he passed, had intended to to redeploy his book speaking specifically to African Americans. And so he died before he got to, and so Dennis Kimbrough, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough was chosen to be the person who would take Dr. or Napoleon Hill's message and translate it into information speaking to African Americans. And I pull this point from it. There is a song that's been sung in black churches uh, all of my life. It is called His Eye is on the Sparrow. And a line from it says, I sing because I'm happy. Dr. Kimbrough says we need to flip that. We are happy because we sing. So one of the things we might take note of is that when we take the time to sing to ourselves out loud, don't need an audience, and many of us do this in the shower in, or in the bath when we're there, we sing because we're alone, and it does something for us. There's something about warm water that comforts our physical being, and when we sing from our soul, it, as, it is like this happy heart that is good medicine and cheerful mind that brings healing. So one of the things I want to recommend to you today, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, you have got to start singing your song to yourself. Now, if you feel good about it and you're, you're okay with your gift and sharing like that, then by all means, share it with some other folks. But don't be happy because you sing. No, forgive me. Don't sing because you're happy. Be happy because you sing. And that, that's a point taken straight from, from Dr. Kimbrough's text. I recommend that text to you. And if, if you don't want to buy the text, he has a lecture uh, on YouTube that you might visit where he's talking to an audience about how to think and grow rich, a black choice. And, and there are just a number of examples in there that will uh, give you ways and pathways and approaches to success for, for whatever you've chosen to do or whatever your vocation is for your life. All right. So besides singing your song, You've got to dance your dance. Now, I don't care how good a dancer you are or even what you think of your dancing, but there is something about the physical engagement of your body in movement designed to enhance your personal feel good that follows dancing. People who love to dance just love to dance. They don't want to stop. There are people who will dance all night long. I have friends. Who, who are proud to share, man, I dance all night long. Now, you know, people when they're younger do more of this all night dancing than they do when they're 50, 60, and 70, but still dance. Look, I don't dance. Dancing has never been a forte for me, but I love to dance. And I really love to dance more when I'm alone. Are you listening to me? I dance my dance because I am alone with myself and my creator in a moment where I need to dance health into my being and happiness into my soul. So I have learned, and I'm encouraging you to consider, that you ought to take a moment to learn how to sing and dance yourself happy. I hope you're feeling me. Some of you will. All right. Now, next thing I want to suggest to you. Being happy is a choice that begins in the mind, your mind. It is a state of mind or a conditioned way of thinking. Now, how many times do you hear people say to you, ain't nothing to do, it's just bored up in here? Well, let me tell you, if your observation of everything around you is boring, guess what? It's not what's around you, it's you. I hope you hear me. It's not a judgment, that's a fact. If everything around you is boring, you need to change the conditions of the things around you. And that begins between your ears in what Hercule Poirot calls the little gray cells. 
You need to start to think your way to the life that you want to live. And if happy is one of those things that you want, you have got to begin to think yourself happy because you decided that you are going to be happy. Are, are, are you here? Are you? All right. If you're going to be happy for the rest of your life, you're going to have to begin to think happy. You're going to have to sing happy, and you're going to have to dance happy. Now, let me underscore this, this notion of happiness begins in the mind with the, with the record of a French philosopher whose name uh, is Descartes. Descartes says, I think, therefore, I am. Am what? I am me. I, I think I'm aware of myself. I'm aware of my own consciousness. Listen, you know all the things that are going on in the process of your being aware of yourself. You think intentionally of the thoughts in your head and you organize them and you put them together in ways to strategically engage life, to develop the relationship you want to do, to make the money that you want to make. You think, therefore, you am. Not good news. You think, therefore, you am. Now, what you am becomes what you Think. Are you listening to me? Some of you are going to get this, and, and, and for others it may take a minute. Whatever you think of you, you are. Whatever I think of myself, I am. Now, you heard me talk about Moses' uh, first encounter with God uh, when he saw a burning bush and when he asked who this was and, and who was sending him on a mission. Uh, the voice that spoke says, I am that I am. Now, what is that I am that I am? It's my call. I think... Therefore, I am. My conditions are the result of what I think. So if I decide with my mind and my thoughts that I am going to be happy, it is no longer unnegotiable that I allow anyone else to frustrate. That is my call. I think. Therefore, I am. I think happy. I sing happy. I dance happy because I have, from my thoughts, decided to act with my body to be happy. Happy. I, I hope you're hearing me. Now, um, in, in the movie The Secret, and you may hear me refer to it from time to time, there's some really good stuff in The Secret, and there's some other things that you may choose to leave without leave without considering. But, but here's one that I, I really want you to consider, and I relate to this one because it's so personal to me. A man named Morris Goodman, pilot, crashed the plane, and everything in his body was so broken up Nobody thought he would live. His, his uh, windpipe was crushed. Nobody thought he'd ever be able to breathe on his own. Everything about him was jacked up from the flow up. Are you, are you, you've heard toe up from the flow up. He was. His, his body was wrecked. He was told he would always be a vegetable. He'd never be in a ho out of the hospital. He would always be on machines to facilitate his life. And yet a thought in him told him to breathe when nobody told him he could. And so he began to work from his mind because he said he could not allow anything to hinder his thoughts toward his healing and the moment he began to learn how to communicate from his condition he told people that he would be walking out of that hospital on Christmas Day. Now did he run a race? No, he didn't run, but he walked out of that hospital and he sums up this this action, this belief system for him. He says that a man or a woman, a man is what he or she thinks about. And all he wanted to think about was his healing and his restoration. And now he's able to tell that story. Now, how do I relate to it so much? When I was 16 years old, I didn't make it home one night. I was coming home from a softball game. The team had gotten beat 30 to nothing. We played the best team. I was the only person on our team that got a hit. But I didn't get home. Wound up in a hospital for months. Have to learn to walk all again. Face all broke up. Had to be restructured arm almost cut off, foot almost cut off, just, I mean, I was messed up. The only, I hope you can hear me tell you this, the only parts of me that were not damaged were my left arm and that part of me that allowed me to participate in the creation of my children. I hope you feel it. That was the only things that weren't messed up. The only thing that I knew was that I was going to be, now I didn't know this when I first woke up because I had to ask, am I going to live? They told me I was going to live, then I went to work on me. I went to work on me. And then I began to say, I'm going to play basketball again. Now, I tried much too fast and didn't work out well on my first time around. Second time around, went back to playing basketball, played on an undefeated team, point guard. You know, I thought I was going to be all that and Mr. Bag of Chips before Jordan. But it, it, it wasn't determined for me to live my life as a basketball player. The creator of the universe and life 
decided that there was another path for me, that my task is to teach people how to love, to love God, love themselves, and love other folks. I, I hope you hear me. I'm not singing because I'm happy. I am happy because I sing. I think, therefore, I am. I bring my I amness to life and what goes on in my mind I bring outside of me and I share with people in every way that I can because I want everybody to at least have the opportunity to think themselves to where they want to be. You want to be happy for the rest of your life. You need to begin thinking happy right from inside your mind. You need to Be happy because you sing. I'm saying to you, be happy because you dance. Be happy because of the way you live. Be happy because of the way you eat. Be happy because you can run that cycle over and over again. You think, therefore you am. You think, therefore you sing. You, you, you think and therefore you dance. You think, therefore you live. And you eat and you have been. You think you are because you are. And because of these incredible deposits alive inside of us, we have the opportunity to choose what is coming next. I hope today you have made the choice to be happy, not for a day, not because you had a good date last night or you had your perfect meal. No, there are going to be some days that you just don't feel good and things don't look good and people don't treat you as well as you'd like them to. Your decision to be happy has to supersede all that. Listen, there will be some days you're going to wake up and probably not even like yourself. But you have decided to be happy because you thought it, you acted, and you lived it. And the more you do that, the more that you will find happiness everywhere that you are because you think, therefore you am. Listen, thank you for joining me. I hope the messages that I'm sharing with you are speaking to you where you need to hear. And if at any time I can ever be a further blessing to you, send me email. It's a good place for us to start. If I have the perception that we need to have further contact, I will negotiate that with you. And if I believe it will be a blessing to you, I will offer you more of me to help you become the person that you want to become. That I think I am offered to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I'm Oscar Crawford. This is the teaching ministry of New Eden.